Alice, you and Jim Spate just gave a, a presentation today about the, the project uh, that you are doing with cross-platform measurement for the people who can't be here. Could you summarize basically the goals of the project and, and where you are? Yeah, the goals of the project were to provide a landscape of what's going on in media ROI measurement today, to help people understand some of the terminology that's being used, to look and see where issues are, and then uh, we've provided a whole series of questions that people need to be asking of their providers uh, so that they are smart and informed about the kinds of systems that they're using and the language. For one thing, we learned that people use the word attribution differently all the time. So just distinguishing between a digital attribution service or a television attribution or a multi-touch attribution or a cross-platform attribution, everybody shorthands it by saying attribution, but in fact they're very different things living in very different ecosystems. So um, do we need more players in this space? And you know, when people look at the digital ecosystem, they say, oh, we need consolidation and it's got to happen and all. But yet, there seems to be an encouragement of competition for more providers in cross-platform measurement. Well, we're in such early stages, I'm not sure. Uh, we don't want to inhibit innovation and experimentation. It's uh, a great time. There are a lot of players doing good work. There's new stuff coming out of academia. And it's just a, a really fertile time. You know, it's those early, uh, early stages. It will eventually all shake out, I'm sure. Oracle tends to buy everything, and Nielsen buys the rest. But um, I think uh, right now, the uh, the number of players and the number of solutions that they bring is a great thing. What do you think were the highlights of what you found out so far, the most important takeaways for the industry at this point? Well, that it's a very dynamic time and that uh, marketers and agencies are really throwing themselves into this arena of, of looking to see what uh, the effects of media are on sales. They're, they're doing all of this work because the promise is so great. I mean, if we get this right, if we get um, the measurement of financial return from every exposure that consumers have across the entire marketing mix, it's going to be fantastic. It's, it's what we've always thought we were going to build. And with the amount of big data, it sounds so stupid, but with the amount of big data available right now, really granular, really individual, the solutions are going to take place we will be able to get to this at some point. So some of the issues you identified are of data and data integration. Can you explain what those, some of those? Well, if I have a perfect data set and I know everything that someone does online, I know what search they look for, I know what websites they end up at, I know what display ads they click on, I know what they presumably post on Facebook, that's a nice, clean, ecosystem. I understand who that person is because I know some things about them. What has to happen next is I have to find their television viewing behavior. So I have to be able to find a data set about this person that tells me what they're doing on television. And that direct match of a person uh, and their media behavior is really the challenge. So it's integrating big data sets uh, figuring out who individual people are, finding the people behind the devices, because a lot of these systems just measure the television set or the mobile uh, phone or the PC. They don't even say that it's you know, uh, you know, a 50-year-old woman who's running all of this. We don't even have that level of demographics on a lot of these things. So identity matching, finding people across data sets, um, uh, linking media data sets together, that's a huge integration issue, much less what statistical technique will be used to correctly fuse these data sets. Big challenge on the horizon on that. And then, you know, the data um, in, the, in the world is incomplete. Uh, Set-top box data comes from 
uh, only a couple of the cable providers. Uh, what happens to the rest of the country? Um, you know, uh, the, the data streams, magazines are being used by some people in these data stacks, but they're only looking at subscribers. They're not really looking at the total range of, of readership. So there are uh, coverage issues. There's a completeness, completeness issue. And the risk at the moment, I mean, it's a good time to experiment with all of this, but what we risk is misattributing uh, the effect to a particular media. That's the thing, a bias, an innate bias because the data set is not complete uh, and misattributing an effect to a media, getting it wrong. So frequency is, is a very critical piece of the puzzle to try to, that's what the advertisers really want to know, how often I'm reaching the same person. Are we getting anywhere on that? Well, frequency capping and understanding what frequency is, is actually a very um, big benefit of digital attribution right now. The, the people are able to see how many exposures they have across the, the digital ecosystem, and that has been a, a pretty well recognized benefit of this approach. Now, if we can uh, knit the rest of the media uh, in the same way, we'll be able to do frequency caps across media and, and see the right combination of media environments.